human beings value status over their lives. Yeah. I mean, that's how much we value status. We, we're, we're the only animal that kills ourselves, which is just a weird thing in itself. That an animal would voluntarily end its own life. And very often the reason that people will kill themselves is because it's a sudden drop in status or they feel completely isolated and alone. So, so, so they're lacking in those essential kind of psychological resources to such an extent that they, you know, end their own lives. And, and, and that's how much we value these things. And suicide bombers are another manifestation of that. Like, yeah. like if you're going to consider me a hero and if Mohammed is going to consider me a hero, strap me up, brother. You know, <sighs> that, 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 that's how much... That, that's how crazy we become about these, these social rewards. God, that is such an insane belief. It's so insane. And when the, the most evil thing is when you hear about them talking kids into doing it. Yeah. You know, a young child, you know, you're getting, a, I mean, what is the youngest suicide bomber they've ever used? I don't know. Just the idea that you can buy into it so much that you're willing to let your children go do that. Yeah, but uh, it's wild. It, it's, uh, uh, it, it's evil. If you think it's this kind of calculating, um, uh, kind of mathematical algorithm of advantage, but, but, but they sincerely believe it. Yes. They, they really believe it's true. Right. I mean, you know, I've been as a, when I, before I was an author, I was a journalist. I've been meeting kind of crazy people, including Nazis, um, as part of my journalistic career. That's one of the things that always strikes me is that they, they really believe it. This oh, crazy they stuff. It. They <laughs> so, it. so, so it's not even in the sense that, um, they, that they're doing anything calculating by talking their children to being suicide bombers. They think they're doing something heroic. Yes. They think they're doing something amazing. Yeah. As did the Nazis, as did, as did yeah. the communists. As, yeah, as did the KKK. There's yeah. People, yeah. they can fall into belief structures and they, they don't necessarily have to make sense. But if they find enough supportive people around them that also believe that, then it becomes part of their tribe identity. Yeah. And it can get, it can be really stupid. <laughs> can yeah. be really stupid. We're yeah. fucking way more vulnerable than we like to believe. That's one of the things that I was saying, like when I watched those cult documentaries, part of me is like, thank God I didn't run into those people. Thank God. Yeah. yeah. They would have got me. And when, and when they look at the psychology of people that are vulnerable to falling into cults, it's very often people that have struggled to fit into the status games of ordinary life. Yeah. So they've got, the family hasn't worked, the job hasn't worked, exactly. the hobbies haven't worked. So they've got no identity, they've got no tribe. So they're really vulnerable to these cults, which, because what cults offer is absolute certainty. Yeah. If you cook your scrambled eggs this way, if you uh, only put two inches of water in your bath, you're going to, you know, the, um, the UFOs will come down and, and they're going to take you to the level above. Th that's what they were offering to you, yeah, though. The you level above human. Wear the Nikes, yeah. though. Remember, you have to wear the purple Nikes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's right. Yeah, and and, and um, th uh, th there's this crazy <laughs> memoir of one, of, one, of one of the guys who was in this group. Who he cut... He, 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 he didn't. He didn't cut his own balls off. He left before the ball cutting. But he was. <laughs> but he was jealous. Like like he, he wanted jealous? to have his balls cut, and there was no. only, there was only one person that could have it done at the beginning. And oh. I had to, they flipped a coin, and he was really annoyed that he lost the coin flip. Oh uh, my god! Uh, but what was interesting about his memoir was he said that people talk about brainwashing in cults, and uh, people talk uh, and people talk about um, how we were forced to follow these rules. But we wanted to follow the rules. Like not following the rules would be like being a NASA astronaut and just not caring about how the space shuttle works you know <laughs> so, so 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 they're not they don't consider themselves brainwashed they consider themselves well they're just in a status game yeah. like, like any other status game it's just a very very strict one right well that's why you know one of the fascinating things about some cults is that they use very bizarre language and that they all agree to it they have yeah. like specific terms that they say like doesn't Scientologists they'll call people they have like an abbreviation for someone who's like a hostile person? <laughs> what is it that they do? Because I remember someone was so someone was explaining to me someone who left the church was explaining to me how like if someone would be hostile you have like a very specific way you describe yeah. them yeah and that they all do it in the yeah. group and they, it's like suppressive persons that suppressive <laughs> persons yes yeah, you're, you're a suppressive person or potential trouble sources <laughs> dude i ordered dianetics in like 1994 i had just moved to la and i thought it was a self-help book i was like <laughs> all right yeah fucking look at your brain's gonna yeah. explode yeah. you're gonna get your shit together look at all these people that are succeeding on <laughs> 
Dianetics, you know, I was 26 or whatever I was. So I ordered this book, and they never stopped sending me things. Oh, no. I mean, they fucking never stopped sending me things. Was there ever a point when you thought, hang on a minute, this is quite interesting? No. No, All right. no, no. Once I realized it was Scientology, I was like, uh, oh, yeah, Dianetics yeah. is Scientology? Yeah. I was like, okay. But then part of me was like, damn, a lot of these Scientologists are doing really well in Hollywood. <laughs> like, maybe that's a good cult to <laughs> yeah. join. Yeah. Maybe if they just let me be me. Because it seems like that was part of it. There was a big allure of how many successful people were following that religion. I mean, some of the most successful actors. Tom Cruise is one of the most yeah, successful yeah, actors yeah, yeah, yeah. of all time, and he's literally the poster boy for that. Yeah, that's right. I, 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 it's, I, I, somebody was saying to me the other day that they thought that actors were particularly susceptible to Scientology because they've got this weird... They don't really have an identity actors. They, they were always sort of slipping into everybody at different people's right. identities. I thought that was an interesting Especially if you're really good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You probably lose who the fuck you are. Yeah. Who am I? Am I Rocky? <laughs> yeah, am I the exactly. Mission Impossible guy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, they, well it, when they're walking around, everybody treats them that way. Like, I'm sure they treat Stallone like he's Rocky. And Yeah. You, know. you got to give respect to Tom Cruise, though, because Tom Cruise is like 60 years old, and he still does his own stunts, yeah. including jumping a motorcycle off a cliff. Yeah. That's but, how much yeah. he believes in this yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, that's, but that's why these, these, these groups are kind of functional as well. Uh -huh. It's like I kind of have a weird kind of sympathy. Like what, what, I grew up in a very strict Catholic household with very strict Catholic parents, and I was very – I hated it. I was very rebellious as a teenager. And I guess in my 20s and 30s, I was very, very atheist and, you know, hated religion. Um, but, but then I kind of did a lot of this research, and, I, and when you, once you accept that what humans need to be healthy psychologically and physically is connection and status, you see that, that that's actually what religion provides people. That, that's what religion provides my parents, right, is right, th right. that they're connected into community and they feel important. Yeah. They feel they're good Catholics because my dad yeah. conducts the choir and, y y you know, this, that and the other. And so that, that, that's invaluable. That's what humans need to survive. And in our, you know, in, in the in, in the current world in the huge uh, populations in which we live it's very hard to feel securely connected i mean as you, you said a moment ago the tribes in which we evolved were very small like 30 yeah. to 50 people so it's quite easy to feel securely connected it was quite easy in that environment to feel important like valued by other yeah. people i mean probably the, 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 it was not rare in the tribe to feel in, invaluable, like you're needed because everybody was needed. There wasn't many people around to find the tubers and catch the rabbits or whatever. Um, but in this day and age, in these huge groups in which we belong to, it's, it's much harder to feel relative status because you're competing with millions of people, especially online. So, and I think that's a source of a huge amount of sort of mid misery in the modern world, a stress sort of, and, I call it an identity anxiety, you know, identity yeah. stress. We, 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 uh, we feel really unsatisfied with the amount of connection and status that we